all over that log that's angled towards us. And there's the first fish. Perfect. Feels big. Feels big. Oh, yeah. Nice crappie. Not bad for uh, first drop there. Took about, I don't know, a minute. Crappies! Spent probably too much time searching all over for deep fish in 30, 40 feet in this channel here. And uh, where we're finding fish is just on stumps, which is pretty easy actually. Got a couple stumps sticking out of the water right here. I'm just going to uh, slam it in reverse back into them. And on my side imaging, I'm going to actually be able to see. Oh, I don't want to bump it. It's the worst thing you can do when you're fishing a stump like this. If you bump it, you're going to scare every fish off it. But I just did a pass with side imaging and I can actually see the stump. I'm going to just freeze the screen here for a second. I can see the stump and I can see fish sitting all over it. So it's going to be no problem probably to just drop down my feather jig here. Just got to wet it. And I'm just going to flick it right into that stump there. Probably not going to take too much to get one because they were stacked up there pretty good and usually the first one comes the easiest. It's actually a really bad cast. I can see that log is angled away from me which means most of the log is over on the other side there and that's where the fish are going to be. Definitely a bad, bad first cast. Here I can see there's fish all over that log that's angled towards us. And there's the first fish. Perfect. Feels big. Feels big. Oh, yeah. Nice crappie. Not bad for uh, first drop there. Took about, I don't know, a minute. Cool. Like I said, that first cast was just the total wrong place. You can see the, the way the log's angled here. It's angled back down away from me. So most of the fish are going to be sitting on the other side of the log. That first cast, I cast on this side of it, and there was nothing there. And then as soon as I flipped it over to the other side, or on top of this other log, it's angled towards me. It was fish on. I'm going to flip it back in there again. Should be a few more fish on these logs here. Certainly we're a lot marking on the side imaging. They're not really cooperating right now, but a lot of times you gotta get right against these logs. There's another one. You gotta get right against these logs because these fish are just holding so tight to the logs. This is a big crappie. I shouldn't try and flip them in. There's a nice wide-bodied slab. What I was saying is these fish are sitting so close to those logs that you really gotta make sure your jig's swimming right alongside them. That's a big fish. And that's what happens. Plucking away. I like using these little hair jigs whenever I can because they got all that hair on there and it really stops a lot of water on the fall and it gives it a lot slower of a fall. And especially when I'm not fishing below the transducer, I don't know exactly how deep I'm fishing. This lets it kind of fall through that strike zone a lot slower and it gives me a lot better of a chance of getting bit as I'm going through. If I'm fishing in deep water, I've got a lot wider of a transducer angle down there and I can just watch my jig fall down on the screen and I know exactly when I'm stopping it right in front of the fish and that helps me, there's another one, that helps me really get on the fish and know where my jig's sitting. Right now I don't really know exactly where the fish are sitting in relation to my transducer because they're so high in the water column and when they're high like that your transducer is really narrow so I can't see my jig on the screen but I know with the slow fall, when I fall through it, on that cast especially, I just fell right through the strike zone. There's fish all loaded up between 6 and 10 feet, and when my jig fell through there, he grabbed it. Got a couple different goodies here. I really need to beef up my hair jig selection, but I tied up a few last night, 
and you can see I've got some tied on 8th ounce jigs, I've got some tied on 16th ounce jigs, and then really small ones. So you kind of, depending how deep of water you're fishing here, I just broke off on the stump, but I'm going to use probably about a 16th ounce with as much feathers on there as possible so it has a really slow fall. If I was fishing in deeper water, I'd move up to an 8th. And if I was fishing in a calmer conditions, like it's really windy out today, I could move down to something even smaller and then it has a really slow fall and they can just suck that in. You always want to use as light as you can so that they can suck it in and just go straight into their mouth and they don't sense that it's something big and heavy. Oh, I just missed one. Nice thing about a hair jig is even if I miss them and I whack them as hard as I want, it's not like my plastic falls down because that hair is just all perfect the whole time. That's what I love about using hair jigs. It's just so durable and always ready to go. Look, drop back down, there he is. If I was using a, oh, lost him. If I was using a, a plastic minnow or something, the first time I set the hook on that fish, my pants would have fallen down to like that. And then I'd be sitting there with my minnow like this, and that fish isn't going to come up and eat it again. But with the hair, he whacked it, I missed him, and my jig still looks absolutely perfect, ready for him to eat it again. I love it. As you're swimming it, you should always be watching your line, because I could get ticked at any point on the slack line or on the tight line. Just swimming it along. There he is. You see my line tap? He just smacked it so hard. It's going to probably be a pretty good fish. Big body, nice and silver. Yes, that's what we're talking about. What I love it is that there's so many in there that I can keep just picking through them. And even though this is like maybe a 13 and a half inch fish, what excites me is what else is living in there. It might be coming out next. That is a great crappie. I love it. Just want one more really big one. Is that too much to ask? Just like maybe a 16 incher? One that shocks me. There he is one, right on the fall. And it's a big one. It is a big one. Oh yeah. That's the one I was looking for. That is a plate size crappie, holy smokes. Okay, now we are talking. That is a great fish, heck yeah.